What's good guys, welcome back to another video. Today I will be ranking the top 10 best arcs in One Piece. For a series that's been kicking it for over 25 plus years, you know they're going to accumulate a lot of good arcs. So why not rank the 10 best, or at least what I think the best is. I feel like this is without say, but obvious spoiler warning ahead, since I will be summarizing key moments that make these arcs just so good. Before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe, it's free and helps the channel out a lot. Alright, starting with our honorable mentions, in no specific order, Saba Odi Archipelago. This arc was action packed, as we are introduced to a large group of new characters from Kizuru all the way to Rayleigh and all the way back around to the worst generation. Not to mention the entire crew learned the harsh reality that there was just so much more room for improvement that they were all overwhelmed and split up by Kuma. Next, Egghead. Although this is the current arc being adapted and published, it will definitely go down as one of the craziest arcs for sure. Oda did state from this point onwards that this would be the final saga, so we would expect nothing but the best, and Egghead is certainly delivering. With the introduction to Vegapunk, the truth about Kuma with his backstory and Bonnie, as well as CP0 returning, even the current fight alone with the five elders will go down in history. It's not crazy to say that this arc could possibly make an argument for top 10 once it's completed. Last but not least, Alabasta. Even with such little action and more lore throughout this arc, it's most definitely an enjoyable one nonetheless. Vivi stole the show from most viewers, along with the antagonist Crocodile. Lots of great moments throughout this arc, as well as Robin finally joining the crew. Now that I've concluded my honorable mentions, let's dive straight into the list, starting with number 10, Zoo. You can make an argument that it's too short of an arc to be in the top 10 with only 22 chapters, but I think that's exactly why I have it here. It's the definition of short and sweet. The Straw Hats managed to help the Minx come back from the awful state the Beast Pirates left them in, and with the shocking plot twist of the Minx risking their lives for just a samurai named Raizo was nothing but stupendous. Let's not forget the beautiful transition of Sanji having to leave the island early due to Capone coming unattended to take him away to Whole Cake Island just to get married. My head was certainly spinning non-stop while listening to this whole arc go down. Icing on the cake is Luffy and Momo's alliance being formed to open the borders of Wano after rescuing Sanji. Oda making sure even transition arcs are hitting for the viewers is definitely something to behold. At number 9, Water 7. This was the first arc where I really noticed the world building in its true effect. The Water 7 island alone, although based off Venice, Italy, was the first time the world building captivated me. Even with islands like Skypea, Alabasta, Long Ring, Longland, they all didn't hit like Water 7 first did for me. World building aside, the introduction of CP0 was definitely one for the books, as some of these characters are even relevant in today's story. Let's not forget about our favorite speedo wearing cyborg, Frankie, who at the time acted like a level 1 grunt, but is now a fan favorite. Nobody had a reason to really like Frankie until we learned about his relation with Tom and Iceberg. All he ever wanted to do was build ships for a living, but instead he watched his mentor die in front of him and also got hit by a train which forced him to use robotic parts to live. Another major moment in this arc was Luffy vs Usopp. They were settling their feud between whether they would keep the going merry or not. This moment is not as important for the choreography itself, but the symbolic meaning behind it. Nonetheless, a very strong arc. At number 8, Baratie. Easily one of the best arcs in the East Blue Saga, as we are introduced to Mr. Prince himself Sanji and owner Zeph. At first their dynamic seemed pretty surface level, but when they hit us with the backstory, pfft, shit had me almost tearing up man. Zeph sacrificing his life for Sanji and almost starving to death is crazy work for a kid you just met. Don't even get me started with one of the greatest of all times to show up in his little ass raft. Mihawk Deadass pulled up and destroyed all these ships for fun. This man is clearly the strongest by just how unbothered he was during this arc. Then he goes on to violate Zoro by beating him with a butter knife he called a sword. But from that point on, Zoro declared he would never lose again, and a thousand chapters later, this man is still yet to lose a fight. Their rematch will definitely be legendary. Back to the topic of the arc, the humor in this arc was A tier, Sanji thanking Zeph for everything he's done and joining the Straw Hats is the W moment. At number 7, Impel Down. This is such an underrated arc in my opinion that seriously never gets mentioned enough throughout the community. So many highs in this arc that gets overshadowed by the next arc Marine Forward, which is understandable. For starters, this is one of the most notorious prisons to hold some of the most dangerous pirates like Crocodile, Dazbones, Ace, Jinbei, Buggy, 
bond play, etc. And the fact that Luffy was able to sneak in using the help of Boa was genius. But the Warden alone was so sick, with his Doku Doku Nomi, one of the coolest devil fruits in my opinion. But let's get real, the real reason this arc is sick is because of gay people. No seriously, without Bonkle and Ivankov, Luffy would have been dead, and they played a major role to help Luffy escape and get to Marine Ford. The sacrifice Bonkle made will never be forgotten. Bonkle is one of those characters that are just impossible to hate on. Also, the long-awaited meetup between Blackbeard and Luffy was very much needed, and to see these two face head to head and impel down was definitely something that caught me off guard. Unfortunately, the fight was cut short since they attempted to escape, but to see a group of characters like this link up and impel down to escape and invade Marine Ford is crazy to me. Look, number 6 might be shockingly low to some and could be interchangeable with 5, but I don't see a single reason it should ever be in the top 4. Eni's Lobby Eni's Lobby is easily one of the most gassed up arcs in One Piece, and I will say it deserves the hype until I see people put it in the top 3 arcs all time. This arc does have a lot of great peaks, but top 3 is crazy. Anyway, on the topic of peaks, this arc truly does have it all. Luffy vs. Lucci was an incredible fight that is overshadowed by a lot of post time skip fights. Luffy vs. Bluno was a generational beatdown since we saw Luffy use Gear 2 for the first time and slap this guy silly. Sanji uses Diable Jambe and Cook Jabra. Chopper uses his ball point and turned into a beast for the first time. And those are just fights. Robin's I Want to Live is a top 5 greatest One Piece peak. We got the Straw Hats declaring war against the world government, the Going Merry drifting to Eni's lobby to rescue the Straw Hats. There is a lot in this arc that it would be just dumb to not have it this high in the list. Number 5, the arc that made me fall in love with One Piece, Arlong Park. Man, I've probably gone back to this arc so many times I could recite it off the top of my head. We just finished a thrilling arc like Baratie to ball my eyes out with Arlong Park. Nami had us thinking she was just some small time crook, but she was doing it all to save Kokoa Village from the clutches of Arlong. Arlong is cruel for killing a child's mom, giving her false hope that she could get her island back just to use her as pocket change. Sickening. But when Nami asks Luffy for help, and Luffy yells okay and tells the boys to strap up, oh man, it's game time! He goes straight to Arlong's base, breaks down the doors, and declares which one is Arlong. Every single hit Luffy landed on Arlong was so satisfying. It's like the feeling when you're outside in the heat all day and you walk into your A-seed home. Hits every single time. Just another short and sweet arc that does everything perfectly. Now these four arcs coming up are all in leagues of their own compared to the rest of One Piece. Starting number 4 off strong with Dress Rosa. We get to this island that's half toys, half humans, all overrun by one of the greatest villains of all time, Don Quixote do Flamingo. If you went to the dictionary and searched up the word menace, there's no question Dofi's picture would pop up. He has done irreparable amount of damage to so many characters in the anime that you couldn't even count. The person who got it the worst was Law, and don't even get me started on the Law backstory. Going through all that he did to chase after Dofi and not even finish the job in the process is crazy. Even his own backstory, after having his entire race killed off and was shown no love by anyone except Corazon. And who did he die to? His brother Dofi. But back to the arc, Sabo being reintroduced into this story was a huge shocker since he took the rest of Ace's legacy by eating the flame flame fruit. Lucy also goes crazy in the arena, encountering a large group of new characters, especially Bartholomew and Rebecca. One of the greatest moments in the arc is Gear 4 Luffy during his fight with Doflamingo. At this point in the story, nothing was spoiled for me, so this was a major shock for me. I seriously didn't expect to see a new Gear since he's been using armament hockey for most of the time skip. And last but not least, Fujitora. His character along with Aokiji give me another reason to appreciate the Marines. Take in a blind swordsman who can control gravity. That's mental. All on top of that, he blinded himself because of how sinful the world is. But Luffy shows him that even someone like a pirate can still be good. That is called storytelling at its finest. These three are honestly interchangeable, but for me, Marine Ford is holding the third place. One of the greatest war arcs in the game, with so many key role players all in one place. Obviously, the biggest moment of this arc is Whitebeard and Ace's death. 
Two characters who didn't get the most screen time, but when they were on the screen, shit was going down. Ace getting packed by Akainu and putting Luffy in despair is not only a huge meme the community ran with, but when Luffy gets his revenge on Akainu, it will be legendary. Also, the plot twist of Ace being the son of Gold D. Roger, Oda's pen must have been on fire when he was writing that shit down. And Whitebeard dying to Blackbeard and getting his devil fruit stolen by him too? That's something nobody expected, especially since we had just witnessed an old Whitebeard split the skies, shake the sea, and almost fold Akainu in two. Blackbeard has been such a huge mystery throughout the entire story of One Piece that I don't know if Oda can pull a fast one on us like this again. Luffy also falling out of the sky and showing up at Marine Fort is sick. Whitebeard pulling up with like 20 different ships right at Marine Headquarters just to rescue one man because he values family is so beautiful. Garp having to watch his two sons fight and do nothing about it was heartbreaking. Also, it was sick to just watch a huge clash of pirates against marines and warlords, something that we probably won't be able to see again throughout the story. At number 2, Wano. Now, this is probably the most controversial one on the list, considering I'm going to see a lot of comments on the pacing of the anime. But pacing aside, if we just look at the content of the story, Wano is easily top 3, no question. Wano was the first arc I followed in the manga from start to finish, and it was seriously the most entertaining. Wano was already so thrilling before the Onigashima raid, the minute the raid started it already shot into my top 5 favorite arcs all time. Luffy, Law, Zoro, Kid, Killer vs Big Mom and Kaido. We will never see a better brawl like this for a long time. And that was a fight to behold weekly. And let me just get this out of the way while I'm at it, obviously Gear 5 was a huge point for this arc. When that chapter got released, the entire internet went crazy, almost a modern day Goku going Super Saiyan moment. Luffy vs Kaido, Zoro and Enma vs Kid, Sanji vs Queen, the Nine Scabbards vs Kaido, Kid and Law vs Big Mom. These are just fights in Onigashima alone. Even before that, we were all invested in the arc. Odin's backstory is one of the best in the series. Wano has a strong reason to be at number 2, and it's honestly like saying grass is green. And at the number one spot and my favorite arc in One Piece, Whole Cake Island. Where do I even begin? The depth in this arc was sensational. World building was in a class of its own, has one of the best fights in the series, and some incredible character peaks. Think about it. Sanji, Luffy, Nami, Brook, Chopper. Not even the entire crew is here for this arc and it's arguably the best in the show. Brook fought Big Mom, stole a Poneglyph and slept with her. Luffy fought against Katakuri, a man who had foresight comparable to Shanks, and won with his new gear Snake Man, which was another huge shock to me when watching. Sanji, the broken man who wanted nothing but to just be with his crew, but was held back by his family conflicts. Jerma 6. His siblings and dad treated him like shit growing up, so they abandoned him. Unfortunately, his mother, the only lady who cared for him, passed away when he was young. I didn't expect Sanji to get a second backstory, which connected the pieces a lot more for his character. Jimbei and Capone are also two faces who we got to see a lot more of this arc as they work together to overthrow the wedding. Also, Carrot. Enough said. This is the top 10 best arcs in One Piece. If you guys disagree, make sure to comment down below your top 5. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. I also plan on ranking the best arcs in Naruto soon. I would have yapped a lot longer for these arcs, but trust me, if I did, it would have been a long video. And I think I got my point across for the most part on why these arcs hold their place. I apologize for the recent laziness of uploads. Trust me, I am trying to find a healthy way to balance everything so that I can continue making content hopefully everyone enjoys. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.